and welcome to SCM's first tutorial on using the band program. This one we're just going to be working with a very simple structure that everyone knows well, rock salt. It's actually in our database of default structures, but for teaching purposes here, we're going to show you how to build it by hand. And we're entering the lattice parameters right now to set that up. And once that's done, we can go and add the atoms to our system. First the sodium, and that will be set at the origin, like so. And if we click on a chlorine atom, we can place that someplace other than the origin, but we know the distance it's supposed to be away from the sodium in three directions, and we'll enter those. Now we can go ahead and save this little project, give it a descriptive name, and of course save the file before we run it. And we can go ahead and run the job right now. By default, this will do a single point calculation, which just calculates the energy of the system along with the density of states, the orbitals and a few other simple things. So it should be done very quickly. And it is. Go ahead and close this. And let's look at the results. First thing we'll be looking at is the band structure of the crystal. It can be seen above. The Fermi level is shown in red. You can zoom in and zoom out as much as you want using the mouse buttons and the relationship to the brilliant zone along with the K points is shown below and if we click on any one of these lines see the relationship between the top and the bottom diagrams now let's look at some orbitals of this system and for this it helps to turn off the uh, repeat unit cells so we're just looking at a uh, single unit here of the structure and let's plot some of the orbitals. Let's start with the one that's lowest in energy here. And there it is, nice and symmetrical. Obviously an S-type orbital. This one is centered on a chlorine atom. Let's look at another one in a higher energy band here. And here we've grabbed a p-type orbital. It's a little diffuse. We can change the confidence level here and see, yes, that indeed it is a p. Let's look at one more for good measure here. And this is a p-orbital as well, centered on a chlorine. A little bit easier to visualize than the first because it's centered at 0, 0, 0. We can look at the virtual orbitals as well if you want. Let's leave this for now and look at the density of states. The total density of states is shown by default at the right. Again, you can zoom in, zoom out with the mouse. And we're going to add another graph of that. And we're going to look at the partial density of states. We just click on the chlorine atom. It shows you the partial DOS for the chlorine. And we can look at just the partial PDOS on the chlorine as well, or the partial SDOS, if you will. Close that up and head back to our orbital plots. Clear that out. And let's do a contour plane. And here we'll show the SCF deformation density. Just plotting that right now. And there it is as a nice cut plane. We can adjust the position of that plane, slide it left and right, and also rotate it into any plane of our choosing. There that is. And we can also get more information on the individual atoms. Here are the partial charges, Hirschfeld charges, for example. And we can see, of course, chlorine's a little bit negative, sodium's a bit positive not quite one electron transferred, but there it is. Concludes the first tutorial. Thanks for watching.